There are a lot of really, really weird sharks. Even the most well-known of the sharks have something bizarre about them for all of us to enjoy. The Mako is just really frickin' fast. The Great White is a warm-blooded beast. And basking sharks are, well, harmless. Among the many forms, the most bizarre of them all thrive at or near the bottom of the ocean, where every one of us hairless apes begin to feel at least some sort of thalassophobia, no matter how toxically masculine we want to come off as. And yet, among these deep sea gremlins is one of the weirdest, most unknown little things I've ever had the fortune of coming across on my many searches through Wikipedia. One of the world's smallest sharks, in the shape of a tadpole and gelatinous to the touch. Meet the humble lollipop cat shark. Happy Shark Week everyone! I do recall that at least once during Discovery Channel's shark propaganda campaign, they aired a special or a series of specials highlighting the alien sharks of the deep. Unfortunately for them, and all the more fortunate for me, and my empire of shark love, they have never covered the lollipop cat shark. In the case of Discovery, that probably has more to do with the obscurity of this pudgy little creature. Before I continue, just want to let y'all know I put Lollipop Cat Shark stickers and shirts up on the Edge Redbubble site, so get some pretty cheap and awesome merch with the links in the description and comment section after you watch the video. Thanks. So let's take it back to where it all began. All the way back to 1892. That's when the first proper description was made out of the soggy, crinkled mess of remains of a chunky little shark pulled from the deep, dark dredges of the ocean floor. Specifically, these little cartilage gremlins were found off the coast of the Gulf of California, all the way down the southern Baja Peninsula. The preserved remains were first described in that year of 1892 by C. H. Gilbert as Catalus cephalus. Catullus was a name given to a genus in the cat shark family, Scyliorhinidae. A bunch of scientists, many decades after the name was made, found that the original material used to name it were the same as a pre-existing genus, so the name got sunk, and therefore, so had the one that had been given to our lollipop cat shark. Henry Bigelow and W. C. Schroeder only got to renaming the lollipop cat shark in the 1940s, giving it the name Cephalurus cephalus. I'm by no means an expert in Latin or Greek roots, but I know a thing or two thanks to my experience with extinct life. Cephalus means head, but I cannot find what the urus or lurus part of the genus name means. Whatever it all means together, there's a lot of head in the name. So the thing has the common name of lollipop cat shark because A, it belongs to the cat shark family. And B, well, look at its shape. The damn thing is tadpole shaped with an enormously enlarged head. This guy definitely works out at the library. Much unlike the pinheaded Catylorhynchus I made a video on not too long ago, the head is also expanded into the branchial or gill region, giving the whole front part of the critter that large lollipop aesthetic. The rest of the body is slender and cylindrical, with the whole critter looking pretty flat from top to bottom from a profile view. The nostrils are widely spaced and flanked by some flaps of skin. This thing is actually pretty boring, at least in the colors and patterns department. The damn thing is just browns, grays, and sickly reddish colors. All the interestingness lies in that odd shape, its size, and where it lives. They have widely spaced teeth that are shaped like tridents. The middle cusp is the longest and is joined to either side by two smaller cusps. The teeth in the skull are relatively straight, while the teeth in the jaw are gay, I mean uh, queer, I mean bent outwards a little. Have I mentioned I have a habit of misspeaking? Papillae, or little filamentous or finger-like projections can be found on the tongue and roof of the mouth. They have large ovular eyes that shine iridescent green. Another unusual feature of the lollipop cat shark is its gills. The gill basket is enormous, having pushed the head and neck region forward from the torso part of the body to the extreme. See these fins? Those are the pectoral fins, but they're all the way back there. That makes these fins the pelvic fins, this one the anal fin, this one the tail fin of course, and then it's got two dorsal fins. 
The pulling of the body and shaping of the body into tadpole shape has also pulled the dorsal fins back, so that the first dorsal fin is behind the pectoral fins and right above and ahead of the pelvic fins. This minute detail is extremely weird for sharks. The body of the lollipop cat shark is super bulbous, soft, and almost gelatinous, just like me. That kind of just goes along with living near the bottom of the ocean. The blobfish is like that too, though it looks like a blob only after being pulled to the surface, and the same kind of goes for our fishy lollipop here. I've spoken about its size, so let me lay it out for you. The lollipop cat shark has been measured at up to 11 inches or 28 centimeters long, with an average adult size of around 9.4 inches 24 centimeters. We babies pop out of the mother at around 3.9 inches 10 centimeters long and reach sexual maturation at around 19 centimeters 7.5 inches. Lollipop cat sharks are ovoviviparous or aplacental viviparous. That just means they give birth to live young, but don't have pregnancy like mammals or some other critters. They keep the eggs inside them until they're ready to hatch, and then the young sharks hatch inside and are birthed live. The huge gill basket is a major adaptation for living in the depths of the ocean. The shark can be found 155 to 937 meters or 509 to 3074 feet below sea level along the outer continental shelf and upper continental slope. The environments at those depths are vacant of large sources of oxygen, so one of the possible ways an organism can adapt to such low oxygen habitats is to adapt a larger breathing apparatus to take in more oxygen. The lollipop just sucks in huge amounts of water to sift as much oxygen out as possible. While they're down there sucking up oxygen, they go after all sorts of crabs and occasionally fishy prey as well. Thankfully for my arthritic hands, and unfortunately for your interest, that's about all there is to the lollipop cat shark. They're just vibing my dudes right there at the bottom. What do you think of the lollipop cat shark? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a like and comment on this video, share it around and subscribe. While you're at it, ring the notification bell too if you want to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Want to help Edge out? Subscribe to the Patreon at any tier you like for a whole smorgasbord of delicious offerings. Many thanks to Thea Svensson, Steve Bradshaw, Staniforth Hopkins, Natty Cat, Dinosaur, Arda Bayer, Abby Smith, Henry Brennan, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Antron. You've all helped to make this channel possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you.